What's going on guys? Welcome back to Poppy Code. You read that title right? I really also hope again you can't see my balls I'm not wearing underwear as usual. It's my birthday. Happy birthday, Mark! Thank you, studio audience. I appreciate you very much. Was that cringy? Was that the cringiest thing I've ever done on YouTube yet? Nah, probably not. We could beat that. So guys, today, first we're going to start it off. I'm going to answer, obviously, the questions. This is Poppy Code. If you've never watched this before, it's where you submit questions and I give you really good answers. I'm working on my birthday, huh? How special does that make you feel? The better, because I fucking love you guys. And thank you guys all so much already for all the happy birthdays. It means the fucking world to me. Here are two videos of um, a fan submitted happy birthday, a trap beat, it's fucking awesome. Plus, my friend who streams with me all the time, David made one as well. It's fucking incredible. I'll put them both in here really quickly, and then we'll get in to the goddamn questions, baby. Uh, very relatable. Here we go, guys. That sounds so good in my headphones. <laughs> That's awesome. Are you playing it on stream? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mark. Happy birthday to you. Hillary Clinton caught lying by the FBI. I like to eat meat. I'm a man. Yo, that was, a, I almost started crying. That was so good. So as usual, guys, we always start off with the YouTube video. And I'm not sure if anybody actually gave questions like I always say, because it's not anonymous. If you give in on YouTube, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say your name, but guys, by the way, the best uh, birthday gift I got so far was sexy vegan getting his Instagram fucking removed. Ah, uh, guys, if you guys want to give me a birthday gift, Tell one friend to subscribe to this channel. That's it. Just one friend. Let's say this. How many views does this poppy code usually get? 1,400? If you could tell, if 1,400 people could tell one person to sub, I would cry. It's not going to happen, but that would be dope. Uh, do you get uh, revenue from the ads or what? If you don't, I'm skipping them. I do. That's the only way I get revenue from the ad is from ads on uh, YouTube, guys. And when people ask me if I make more money from watching the entire ad, I'm not sure. I have no idea how any of that works. <laughs> Stacy said I'm the new Dr. Phil. That's goddamn right. What type of food does Miles, Miles prefer? Whatever food my mom buys him. I have no idea what it's called. Uh, does he eat treats named Snaps? Three out of four dogs prefer Snaps. Is that an advertisement? Um, he doesn't actually like treats. He only likes Cheerios. It's very, very weird. Like, we have a bunch of dog treats for him. Does not like them at all. You're 22? Yes. Well, not anymore. 23 as of right now. Wow, just got a royal wedding advertisement. Yeah, that's really fucking exciting. Can't wait to watch people I don't give a fuck about get married. Except I wanna, I wanna marry the person he's marrying. She's my favorite. Per she's she played in suits and I was like, I'm in love. And now she's taken. So, uh, I guess suicide's an option. All right, I have a Facebook submitted one from a, uh, a local rapper. Poppyco question: Why are penguins pussy magnets? Because penguins are adorable, and, and women like to fuck adorable things. Who's your girlfriend's favorite rapper? Not you. Um, if the earth is flat, why are my tits round? The FBI is going to message you right now. Stay where the fuck you are. Can I please fuck the squirrel? He keeps getting in my trash. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you could fuck. Yeah, that's, you have my consent. Ooh, almost 400 followers on Twitter. Go to Twitter! At Winebox Poppy. Give me the 400. How do I handle a stressful or overwhelming day? Um, I do not... Well, nowadays, I don't really have stressful or overwhelming days anymore, to be totally honest. Um, when I used to, I honestly wouldn't give a shit because I know that, like, ev everything is, is not... It's not permanent being stressed out 
or, or being overwhelmed or anything like that. It's going to end. It's going to get better. And if you really worry about it and overly stress about something that's stressing you out, it's going to make the stress worse. So I think I said in the last Poppy Code, like, even if I get into a car accident, something that is bad, I won't react negatively to it because why react negatively to something that is negative? Because you're just going to be adding on negativity. So I say mitigate all of it. Be like, okay, stress is a part of life. And if I don't have stress, then I don't have not stress, right? Like it, it's uh, the yin and yang. You have to have the good with the bad. If there was no bad, there would be no good. So having having emotions and feeling stressed and overwhelmed, I kind of look at it. This, this might be a little fucking weird, actually. Uh, I kind of look at it as a good thing, okay? And then let me, let me explain this really quickly. Um, because one day, all right, you are not going to be able to, to experience anything anymore, okay? Let's just say you uh, believe what I believe, right? There's no afterlife or anything like that. So to me, um, I'm going to die one day, right? And I will not be able to feel pain, stress, being overwhelmed. And, and to me, I would rather feel stressed out than be dead, right? So having the feeling of, of like pain if I hurt myself or being overwhelmed or stressed, I'm like, this is kind of fascinating. Like it's, it's just a part of life. And I'm like, I'm, I, I literally am lucky enough to experience emotions and, and pain and stuff like that. Is that weird? I don't know. Maybe I'm the only person who looks at it that way. I think I read it somewhere in a, in one of the books I read. Um, the guy, he got severe burns all over his body. He had to be in a hospital bed for so long. Nobody could come in. Nobody could touch him or anything. He didn't feel anything. He couldn't feel shit right? Everything was numb and every, he couldn't feel anything, the cloth or anything around him. And then one time a nurse came in and uh, he was like in there for a long time, right? And uh, so a nurse came in and brought him a snowball from outside. And she definitely wasn't supposed to do that because of contamination and stuff like that. She brought him a snowball and he finally felt for the first time in so long the the feeling of coldness, right? It was so cold and it just melted all of his hand. He got to, he got to feel it. And he was like, I forgot that I could feel things. So ever since I read that, I was like, the, the fact that I'm lucky enough to be able to feel any type of emotion, good or bad, to me is, is like a blessing. So that's how I deal with it. Wow, that was uh, really, that was deep. Thank you for your question. When are you coming to London so we can do lunch? I want to go to London so fucking bad, you actually have no idea. And I have no idea why I'm so drawn to going to London, but I want to very badly. So if I'm ever there, when I'm not a broke-ass bitch, we'll do lunch. What's your favorite part about being a content creator? Uh, well, there's actually a couple things, but I think the my favorite part is interacting with you guys. It, it's kind of tied, right? So the interacting with you guys is absolutely incredible. It, it's it's so weird, but amazing. It's definitely my favorite part. That's why I do Twitch so much, and I love it so much because I, I literally get to directly interact with you guys and talk to you. That's why I like doing Mail Day and Poppy Code the best out of everything I do. However, the best part about being a content creator, I really do think, is the, the ability to be myself and be accepted by you guys. It completely blows my fucking mind that I can be myself and not have a boss like that's the best part because like, when I have a boss I feel like I'm dying right I feel like I'm suffocating I can't do it so being myself and not having a boss and doing whatever the fuck I want saying whatever I want is the greatest part and doing whatever it's just insane that's amazing but you guys literally interacting with you guys is, is almost tied with that it's it's so great so to me I'd have to say being myself doing whatever I want not having a boss and interacting with you guys is pretty much just a, a culmination of everything like, it's, that's the best where does the name Winebox Poppy come from? Any meaning? Uh, Drake is Champagne Poppy. He is, um, I'm the exact opposite of him, right? He's rich, black, good looking. I am poor, white, and ugly. Champagne Poppy, Winebox Poppy. Champagne is far better than boxed wine. Like, for some reason, I saw his name and, like, instantly, I didn't even think, I didn't try and consciously think about it. It just hit me. Winebox Poppy out of fucking nowhere. It used to be my personal name, actually, on uh, Instagram. What would completely make or fuck up your birthday? Um, well, I don't really, like, I, I actually don't look at, like, making my, I mean, I guess to, like, make my birthday would be, like, if I, like, blew up on YouTube, right? Like, I, I every day for me is awesome, right? So I don't, like, put too much emphasis on my birthday because it actually isn't special, right? It's just, what, it's just you're born that day, whatever. But I think, like, blowing up or something would, like, completely make this historically the best birthday ever. Uh, what would completely fuck up my birthday? A close family member dying or, like, my YouTube channel being removed. That's the only way. Other than that, nothing can really ruin 
anything for me, actually. I'm usually super, even if it's my birthday, like, I don't know. It, it, I couldn't imagine, like, something ruining my, my day. If you could fuck any man in the world, who would it be? It would definitely be the man who played Thor. Easy. No doubt in my mind. Or any man uh, who's rich. If you drive a car over $40,000, I'll fuck you. If you could buy merch of any person from 90 Day Fiance, who would it be? Danielle, easily. And Nicole. Well, Danielle is just so fucking ugly. It would be hilarious on a shirt. However, Nicole is just fucking iconic. You know, like a Nicole and Azan one would be... Mwah. Everybody knows who they are. I guess everybody knows who uh, Anfisa and George is now because of H3, apparently. So I guess maybe they're more iconic. Why are all the best people born on 519? Me too. You're goddamn right. I know so many people born on May 19th. Actually, like, three, four... F I know five people who have the birthday on this day, actually. Now six. If you could commit any crime without being caught, what would it be? Stealing a fuckload of money. This is not an admission of guilt to fraud or anything, future FBI people. I'm just saying, if I had to pick, it would be just an incredulous amount of money. Is incredulous a word? It is now, bitch. If it's a sunny day, do you apply sunscreen on your head? Um, I don't know. I have no idea. Do I? Maybe. I think I do. I, usually, I don't really go outside, actually. As you guys can see from how pale I am. Um, if I go, like, on a bike ride, I, I won't, because it's only, like, 45 minutes, and that's pretty much the most I'm outside. But if I'm gonna go, like, to the beach or out to, like, Chicago and I'm not wearing a hat, I, I probably would. Yeah, this one made me laugh so hard on stream yesterday when I, I got this, I think I got this while I was on stream. You're washing your face, how far up do you go? I laughed so hard, but actually, um, my, the stuff I use is either... Is like a face wash and I don't I, I could I just do the whole fucking thing. I could do all of it. Doesn't really matter. I do all of it. Where do you aspire to be in five years? Oh boy. Definitely in California. Definitely with my own studio, working with a ton of people, making amazing shit. So 100 percent in California making videos. Like the greatest possible videos I can, hopefully making a lot more money. Not to have money and have things, but to just create better things, right? Like money can hire people, I could get actors i can start doing the things i really really want to do and make things super awesome and move to california being around a lot of creators but definitely california streaming still hopefully and definitely doing youtube the streaming probably the youtube one million percent will still be here do i hear yanny or laurel laurel by the way everybody's freaking out about this i think it's fucking stupid by the way but i did hear laurel how did you motivate so wait she's she said my question for women's code Women's code. Oof. Oof. Poppy code. Okay. Oof. Hey, let's not discriminate. All right. We got, we got men here too. How did you motivate yourself to start a channel? And do you find it hard to be vulgar self as you gain more subs? This, this last part, I love. I love this. By the way, I love your channel as a black woman. I love to see people joke without fear of backlash because lately everybody seems like a bunch of sour pussies. Oh, you, you fixed it. Wine box code instead of woman's code. Okay. <laughs> I didn't read that far. God bless. Okay, let's start off from the top. But yeah, thank you so much for the compliment. How did you motivate yourself to start a channel? Well, to me, I was like, I think I'm going to be so good at this. I was like, I just want this so bad. I kind of, I, I, I know that motivation doesn't last. So I kind of made myself a moral obligation, right? Like, it is such a deep obligation that to me, it's like, if I don't do it, I'm going against my own beliefs, right? You know, like, how some people deeply believe in God, or, like, people deeply believe, like, the North, uh, Kim Jong-un, he can read your mind and stuff like that. Like, people will literally tell on themselves in North Korea if they have a bad thought about him. So, to me, I look at it, I'm like, I need to do this, right? And I understand that I can miss an upload, which I have, only, like, a Sunday upload or something like that. So, nothing insane, right? I haven't missed, like, a whole week. I would never fucking do that, especially nowadays. However, I do... I'm like, this is the most important thing in my entire life is to do this. Because I had this feeling that it's going to work and I'm going to I'm gonna make it and figure it out. So I was like, I have to. I owe this to myself and to the world. That's how I owe it to myself and the world to do this YouTube channel. That's how I look at it. Like, if you have something to offer, you don't just owe it to yourself. You owe it to the fucking world to use that gift. Let's say you're really good at drawing. You literally owe it to the world to do that for a living. Like, you owe the world your amazing ability 
that you were given, right? That you were born with. Because somebody else might not be able to do what you're doing. So we we should be able to see what you can create, right? It's it, But in reality, it's like about doing what you like. So if you're good at something and you like doing it, that's just kind of the way to be like, oh, now I'm obligated to give it to other people. Maybe people do want to see it, right? So if doing something for yourself isn't good enough, think about everybody else. Because if you create great content or great art or something, give it to the world. Because that's, it's like escapism. You know, people love art, comedy, sad things. People deserve it. Give it to them. And, and if you're good and you're consistent and you keep doing it, it will fucking work out. I, I guarantee it you'll be discovered. It's today in today's age it's much easier than it used to be to do things you want to do. Do you find it hard to be your and do you find it hard to be your vulgar self as you gain more subs? Absolutely not. Um I saw somebody comment saying they're like on the YouTube video they're like you seem like you're doing you're trying to be for a more broad audience. But like if I ever do seem like that guys, guys remember I'm making a video every single day of my life. And you have to understand that you guys are going to be seeing changes of me growing as a human being. I'm still young. My brain is not done developing yet. Like that is about 25-ish So when it's done developing. So if you guys are seeing changes throughout me, it's not a conscious choice to change. It's just natural. And, and if you, anybody ever goes, oh, go back to the way it used to be, like that's probably not going to happen, right? Like why would anybody ever go back or revert to something, especially if it's growing in a certain direction? But I, I will never make a conscious choice, really. I, I don't really I, – I plan things out. Obviously, this is planned, but everything to me is so – off the cuff. I have nothing ever written down or planned. It just comes out of my face. So nothing, to be honest, can be consciously planned to not be as vulgar. So if that ever happens, that's just a choice my body makes and I don't physically make. You know what I'm saying? But but I am not going to lie to you though. I'll be completely transparent with every single one of you guys. I did. Sometimes when I say something, I'm like, fuck. I have, like After I hear it, I'm like, should I keep that in? And, and I do. I do keep them in. I do have that thought that I'm like, and when I think that thought, I'm like, wait, if I don't keep it in, who the fuck else is going to keep it in, right? Because so many people are trying to be politically correct and, and be good for everybody, right? That's not how you should be. You should never try and please everybody, and I never will try and do that, right? Because if you pl try and please everybody, everybody's just going to hate you. So, um, you know, I'm like, if I take this out because it might be too offensive, I have had that thought, I, I keep it in. I'm like, who the fuck am I? Like, this is what I'm doing. I don't care if somebody gets offended. Fuck it, let's just keep it in. And evidently, nothing bad's happened, and I've been right. If I keep it in, I think I've been right. Nobody's been like, wow, dude, that was really awful. I think it's just kind of one of those things where it's like, Ugh. you know, you, you always have that little thought, but it's never really been anything morally awful. Like, it's not like a Logan Paul suicide force thing. Like, I've never even been close to that. It's just like words, you know? I don't know. But everybody always has that interior uh, dilemma. So I guess it is, con well, it's not conscious when it comes out, but it's the conscious decision to keep it in. So I don't know. I don't know. I nothing's going to change, hopefully. Like, why would it? And I think this is the last one, guys. Here we go. So excited. I work for Starbucks, and they have programs where you can go to college for free through them. It's online, but it's still an option. I'm debating staying with the company and taking this option or leaving for a better-paying job. A little backstory, I have no idea what I want to do school, career-wise. I previously went to college but left for the same reason. I mean, fuck. So, here's the thing with... If you don't know what you want to do, though, I would say... I mean, I don't know how deep they're willing to pay for college like they're, it's they're probably going to have you do things you don't want to do like you know all your prerequisites and shit like that um I really don't think I mean college is good for finding yourself but if you're doing it online you're not going to find yourself to find what you really want to do in life I've told this to people and they never fucking do it and doing what I'm about to tell you is going to make you look really bad in the eyes of the overwhelming majority of your peers and every single person you run into until the point where it works, okay? And this is what I did and if you do it, you're going to win. I can fucking guarantee it. If you don't, okay, 95% of people aren't going to listen to me. I've told people to their face that they should do it and they keep fucking asking me what they're doing isn't working and I'm like, have you listened to me? And they're like, no. I'm like, there you fucking go. So here it is. Try as many things as possible. I don't know how old you are, but if you're not 80 years old, 85, you're young enough to try things, okay? Even if it, here, like, try things, and if you have any feeling about it not working out in the long run, if you can't see the end game, if you, if you hate it, quit and go to the next thing.
okay? For example, I went to uh, fashion school, right? I, I love fashion. I love clothing. I went it made me hate fashion a lot. I woke up one morning. I was like, I don't fucking like this. I quit. I stopped going. Yeah, I lost $500 for the class, but the time investment is worth so much more to me than fucking $500. You can always make money back. You can never get your time back. So always try things. Move on to that and move on to the next thing, right? Business school, hated it. Quit. Um, bartending school. I, that actually, that was my backup. I mean, I didn't quit bartending school. I just, I can, I can do that. Um, fashion school, quit. First YouTube channel, quit. Because you just know, I know when things aren't working and I can't see the long run. Stand up, comedy, quit. Because I've made the decision to pick this comedy instead of stand up. So just pick the things and qu like quit as quickly as possible. Try the thing and quit and go on to the next thing. And people are gonna be like, oh, you're a fucking quitter. Dude, why do you quit so much? What do you think about people thinking you're a quitter and shit? Good. Quitting is good. Intelligent people quit. Stupid people. Here, I always say this, and this is the thing. This can change lives. I think I heard somebody else say this, and I rehashed it a little bit. But I, I don't think I came up with this uh, original thought. However, this changed my life, and this is how I live my life, okay? If you are driving to the store, it's four miles away, okay? And it's the only store you have to go to. It's, it sells the one thing you want, right? You're driving, it's four miles away, you drive two miles, okay? And you, in your mind, you're like, oh, fuck, it's closed today. Since you drove two miles, are you still going to go to the store because you started driving? No. You're going to fucking turn around and go home because it would be stupid. What, you're going to go there just because you started already? Because you put in the gas and money investment into driving those two miles? Absolutely fucking not. For me, college, four years. I went for two years. I, it was closed for me. I turned the car around and took, I cut my losses, right? I saved the time and even more money and did other things. So take that what you will. The, the, the two mile, four mile thing can go with anything, right? You've been at a job for eight years, right? You, yeah, and then you're like, oh, fuck, I've had so much time here, but I really want this other job, even though this other job pays me less, but I'll enjoy the job more, right? Let's say the job pays you $5,000 less, but you love it. Take the fucking job you like, even if you put in the time investment of eight years and you're going to get a raise. Fuck money. Money is never a good reason to do anything on earth. Happiness is the main goal in life. That is the answer to life. What's the point of life? Being happy. That's quite literally it, as long as it doesn't hurt anybody else. Where did that come from? That got really fucking deep. Okay. That was, I'm going to end it right there on that one, guys. Thank you. I'm going to maybe make, I was going to make it, uh, it's my birthday in the title, but I might put the meaning of life. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll put my birthday. That'll probably get some clicks. Yeah, fuck it. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I love every single one of you. Thank you guys again so much for all the happy birthdays. It means the fucking world to me. Smack that face right up there to subscribe if you haven't already. Two goddamn videos right over there. And if you want to help support the channel and help it grow, patreon.com. I can't really see where it's going to be, but it's right down here in the bottom right corner. If you want to help support it and help it grow, because money helps us invest in things. And speaking of investing, twitch.tv slash wineboxpoppy. We stream every single day, Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. to midnight central time, guys. I will be auto-hosting my friend who's coming over for a pregame I'm having tonight. He's going to be live streaming, IRL streaming, the pregame and us going to the bars and stuff. So make sure to check that out. It should be super fucking awesome. Thank you guys. I love every single one of you. Mwah.